Psalm 34. I will be reading just three verses from there. Psalm 34, verses 17 to 19. Psalm 34, verses 17 to 19. And then the Bible says, The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and saves such as have a contrite spirit. Now take note of verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Today we will be speaking on what I've titled the principal solution. The principal solution. By way of starting this discourse, I will define just one word. And that one is the word solution. Solution is a means of solving a problem or a means of dealing with a difficult situation. A solution is a means of solving a problem or a means of dealing with a difficult situation. And so we are looking at the principal means of solving a problem, the principal means of dealing with a difficult situation. Permit me to give us some facts about problems, some things you need to note about problems. And one of them is that problems are part of human life experience. Problems are an integral part of human experience. Our experiences in life are not complete if problems are taken out. As a matter of fact, problems form a very, very important part of what defines us as human beings. So take our problem and the man is not complete. Take out challenges and our life is short of something very important. So problems are part of human life experiences. Another fact about problems is that no human being is immune to problems. No human being is immune to problems. The great, the small, the old, the young, the rich, the poor, the strong, the weak, every human being will at one time or the other go through a problem or a set of problems. So let's take note of that. As a matter of fact, by reason of extension, even God is not free of problems. Somebody asked me, what is God's problem? We are his problem. Hello? We are his problem. So even God has problems in his hands. Before we were created, he had no problem. But after man came, a man began to show their true power. So no one is immune to problems in life. 
Another fact to know is that every problem in life has an expiring date. No problem is meant to be forever. No problem is meant to be permanent. Every problem from the day they show up, they have come with an expiring date. So tell that problem, the problem I'm not denying the fact that you are here, but you have an expiring date. You have a limited time. You have a, you have a lifespan. So tell your problem that it has a lifespan. Another thing to note is that every problem has a solution. Every problem, it is just like when a manufacturer has just concluded making a product, especially we live in a jet age now. Let's talk, let's zero it down to electronic gadgets. That's what they call troubleshooting. Hello. When they have made it, as they are making the manuals, as they are making the instructional manuals, they also create an aspect where they call troubleshooting. In other words, they preempt the likely problems and how to solve them. Because every problem has a solution. And that should be comforting to somebody. That should be encouraging to somebody. Another fact to notice that human problems come in sizes. Human problems are met out in sizes. Therefore, your size in life determines the size of your problem. That is to say that the problem of a man is directly proportional to the size of that man. So there is nothing like your problems are too much for you. Oh, my problems are too much for me. No. If I think that the problems I'm facing are too much, it is because I have underestimated myself. It is because I have cut short the expectations of God for me. Because God Himself has shown us in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, that there is no temptation that taketh the attempt that which is common to man. But that God we always make a way of escape for you and problem. So don't think that your problem is bigger than you. No, Pro the problems of man they are met out in sizes. So your problem is directly proportional to your size. So don't let anybody deceive you. Don't let those that call for pity parties make it look like you're the most miserable man in life. That this problem is too great, it's too heavy. This problem is going to get you to care in. Those are just lies from the pit of hell. Whatever problem that comes your way, it is because it is, it is, it is proportional to your weight. Maybe you've not actually taken time to look at yourself. You've not taken time to measure who you exactly are. You lack the right, you lack the right appraiser of who you are. That is why you think that some problems are bigger than you. So when the problem shows up, you begin to wear a long face. So that people will pity you. Listen to me. If you wear a long face, you make the journey long. You say, because of a problem, you are wearing a long face, you are just making the journey long. Clean up. Look beautiful. Look shiny. Look radiant. Let them look at you and say, ah, is this not the person going through this? Praise God. Praise Jesus. Very important. Very important. Your problems come measured to your size. Another thing we need to know is that problems come in different natures or forms. Problems come in different natures or forms. So there is no point trying to use my yardstick for dealing with my problems to also say you should deal with yours with the same way. Problems come in different forms and natures. 
And that is no problems will come in, in numbers. Problems will come in numbers. For example, the problem will come in it could come single as just one, it could come double, and it could actually come in multiples. Problems could come in multiples. Sometimes you are dealing with one problem, you haven't found a solution as it were, another one rolls in. And then you are trying to combine it with yet another rolls in. And while you are still trying to another rolls in, and it keeps rolling in, and rolling in just like the case of Job. Job was a man who said, oh, I was at peace, yet affliction came in. He said he was at peace, but afflictions one after the other. You know what? That is one of the characteristics of problems. Sometimes they come singular, or sometimes they come in multiples. Another thing to know about problems is that problems are time related. Problems are time related. In other words, some problems come for a period of time. E.g., some problems will only last for minutes, while some will last for hours, some for days, some for weeks, some for months, and of course some for years. So problems are time related. Problems are and time, they are inseparable. Problems are time related. Also to note is that some problems come at start at certain stages of life. Some problems come at certain stages. Some problems surface at childhood. Some wait until teenage age, while others wait until full adult, and others also wait until one is aging. So problems come at different stages of life. So there is no stage of life that is problem free. So don't think that because now I am 20, or because I am 18, let me talk to teenagers, because I am 18, then all my problems are solved. I will tell that you have money, I can now live on my own. Hey, it's just an opening up another chapter of a different set of problems. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Another point to note. Problems vary from place to place. Problems vary from place to place. There are some problems that are relevant or are limited to certain locations, but are not in other locations. Now that does not mean that the other location is free of problems. It's just that their own kind of problems could be different. Praise God. So what does that mean? You are fleeing from Africa because there is a problem of poverty to Europe. When you are getting to Europe, you are meeting a different set of problems. And somebody did an analysis and said, 70% what a figure of marriages that were flourishing in Africa. The moment they move over to Europe, 70% collapse. Now, is that another set of problems? You run from one, meet another one. So, problem is that no, there is no location, as it were, that is problem free. So, if you are running from some problems from somewhere, prepare in your mind that you are likely to meet another set, another kind of problems where you are going. Let me say this and then we will move on. Problems can make or mar a man. Problems can either make you or break you. It depends on your reaction to problems. It depends on how you view problems. It depends on how you see problems. It depends on how you handle problems. It can either make or break 
It is my prayer today that as I, through the help of the Holy Spirit, open our eyes to a principal solution to the problems of man, that from now on we will handle problems the right way in the name of Jesus. Let me say this. Have you pointed out these characteristics of problems? Whichever ones define your own problem or set of problems, the fact here remains that a problem is a problem. The fact doesn't change. Whether your problem is different from mine, whether your problem is time-related or not, a problem is a problem. We need to agree on that. And then we can move forward. Because if you agree that a problem exists, and that a problem is a problem, then your reaction to a problem is very important. How you deal with a problem is very important because finding a solution to a problem is an instinct response from us as human beings whenever a problem presents. The moment a problem presents, the first thing that instinct will tell you is that you need to find a solution. You need to find a solution. You need to find a solution. It is instinctive for man to find solution to a problem. So in trying to find a solution, what you do, what I do, what we do, will go a long way in determining how and when a problem will be solved. And that is where we are going today. What we do when problems present will determine and when the problem will be solved. There is a principal solution that applies to every problem human beings can ever face. The reason many problems stay longer than necessary is because we often neglect the principal solution to problems and we begin to go after some other forms of solutions. When I say problems stay longer than necessary is relative. It is very relative. In the sense that a problem that is longer than necessary for me may not be longer than necessary for you because our strengths are not the same. The clock of our lives are not wound equally. Praise God. So the one who determines longer than necessary is God. Not you, not me. It's God because He knows how He has met everything out to us. And when we say something is principal, it means that that thing must not be neglected. So, the principal solution I'm bringing your way today is not something you should neglect, it's not something you should look down on. It's not something you should joke with. It's not something you should trash after living here today. Because there are very few things that the Bible tells us are principal. Very few things. For example, in Psalm 11 verse 3, Psalm 11 verse 3, the Bible makes us to know that foundation is very principal. That's why it says, when the foundation is destroyed, what can be right you? So, foundation is very, very principal. The Bible uh, enjoys us to pay attention to foundation because it is a principal thing. Also, if you check the Bible, the Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7, it says, wisdom is a principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And all with all that get in get understanding. So wisdom is another thing. The Bible tells us is principal. So when something is principal, that it calls for attention. That it should not be neglected because it means it is forming a very vital block of an establishment. So what are we talking about today? The principal solution. 
solution. But I'm bringing your way today that I want to announce to you today the principal solution that has answer to all human problems is called prayer. Somebody say prayer. Nobody else won't say it loudly. Pray. Pray. Tell them I say prayer. The principal solution. It is heartbreaking. It is heart wrenching to discover that with all the power that prayer possesses, we, for whom prayer has been established, we look down on it so much. We downplay it. We have treated prayer. In every way, other than it should be treated. So, I will mean, just, for the purpose of this, ask a question What is prayer? What is prayer? Basically, please take note of this. Basically, prayer is a solemn call for help. Simple. Prayer is a solemn call for help. We do everything except prayer. Prayer is more devastating of the enemy than the weapons of mass destruction. So there is nothing that prayer cannot do. If we look at our text today, verse 17 tells us that the righteous cry. The righteous cry to God. In other words, the righteous call to God for help. And the Bible tells us that, that in verse 17 said the righteous cry out and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The righteous is talking about you and I because our righteousness is of God. It says we, we call upon God, he heard us and not just that he heard us he delivered us from all our troubles. It's only prayer that can deliver from all troubles. Doctors are only delivered from sickness. They can deliver from other things. Financial experts can only deliver from poverty. They cannot deliver from other things. But the Bible here says, the righteous call, God answered, and delivered from all. 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 That is why prayer is a principal solution. Because it answers all. It takes, it takes care of all. It fixes all. It prevents all. It resolves all. It attends to all. It's not limited. But we're not paying attention to it. We're not paying attention to it. That is the most painful aspect of our lives. There is nothing that prayer cannot do. In Mark 11, 24, Jesus was the one speaking there. He said, What things soever we desire when we pray, what things soever means what things soever. It means nothing should be excluded from prayer. What things soever. In John chapter 14, verse 13, John chapter 14, verse 13, the same thing. So, whatsoever ye shall ask in my name. Verse 14 says the same thing. Whatsoever you ask in my name, <laughs> if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Anything. But rather than asking the, rather than doing the right thing, we do every other thing and neglect the right one. Let's look at this attendance on a Sunday. On Tuesday, when we come together to study and pray, the attendance is a very, very debilitating fraction of what we have here today. But we complain. But we complain. We mumble. Unknown to us, 
We are the ones that are not doing the right thing. Shall we rise on our feet, please?